Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today what we're going to do is I'm going to walk through the steps of what it takes to upgrade Linux Mint from a previous edition up into 20.3. I'm going in this case on my laptop from 20.2 to 20.3. So we're going to walk through all of the different options that we have. So the first is you do have in the new Linux Mint, I think starting around 19 or so, uh, you had the system reports. So the system reports gives you any updates to the system. It starts with like language packs, make sure you have time shift enabled. And when there is a new upgrade, you can actually find the upgrade in the system reports. In fact, you will get a system report that tells you there is an update available. Now there's another place and that is as always has been there is also an update in the uh, update manager and in the update manager they have actually changed the location and it is now under edit. So if you go into the update manager and pull down the edit menu then you will see the option in this case it's telling us that we can upgrade to Linux Mint 20.3. So either clicking either of those guys is going to load up the update manager and this is going to tell you that there is an update. Now before you walk through that you want to take a few extra steps. The first step is go into your software sources and if you have added any extra repositories, any PPAs, any of that type of stuff, you're going to want to disable those. Now the update manager will disable them for, your, for you but I would always prefer to up um, disable those manually that way nothing else goes weird once you get those uh, disabled in this case I don't have any of those make sure that all of your system is up to date now to be clear what your repository uh, or your PPAs are going to do is it's going to give you different versions of software than is in your repository or it's going to give you software that is not in your repository. So if you disable the PPA, run an update, you might downgrade that package temporarily. That's okay. Uh, what we're going to do then is update the system, make sure everything is up to the latest, and then we're going to go through the update system, and then it's just going to do its thing. And then at the final step, you can re-enable your PPAs and update your software. Now, there's one more step I did not do in my initial video here, and that is that I did not go through and change my repository sources. You may not have to do that if you've already done that, but since I am in a van and I am traveling around the country, that will actually change based on where I'm at and where my internet's coming from. So I actually started the process just fine and then at times it'd be like, hey, this is gonna take five hours. Uh, I don't have five hours, sorry. And so uh, what you wanna do then is make sure that your software repositories are pointing to fast locations. So I actually canceled my update here and I went ahead and I changed those and then we went ahead and uh, made those adjustments there. And so once I did that, then it went from five hours to about 20, 30 minutes. And overall, my time, if you're watching the clock on my computer here, the grand total time takes only about one hour to do the upgrade. So once you get that upgrade done, then you just go in there and reboot the system, make sure everything is working. And in my case, everything worked. All of the software is the latest 20.3 version, and now my laptop is running Linux Mint 20.3. Nice and easy, simple, and I didn't have any real issues other than the fact that eh, I forgot to check, make sure I was downloading from good repositories. Uh, that's a simple mistake. That's why I make sure that you correct that one. So hopefully this will help you in uh, deciding if you want to upgrade to Linux Mint 20.3, if you have a previous version, and how to do that. In my case, I waited about to, uh, what is about a month or two. I forget exactly when the new version came out. It was about a month or a month ago. So I waited about a month. I always like to do that. I don't like to upgrading things as soon as something is out. You want to wait a little bit of time. I gave it a month, make sure any bugs, any issues and stuff are worked out. And then I upgraded the laptop and we're going to run the laptop for about 
a month maybe. And then once I know that there's no bugs on that, then I'm gonna go into my main computer and we're gonna go ahead and do the same updates over there. So this way, uh, here's the lesson to be learned for this general approach. Make sure you have test options. If you run a big, highly important production system like my video production computer, I use a laptop as, which is sort of as a mirror of the system. And actually I bought this laptop behind me so that I have an additional backup computer in case this one goes down. And eventually we will try streaming with this beast back here. Um, but the fact is, is you wanna make sure that you have a few plant, uh, plants in place just to make sure if something goes goofy, uh, you can get things working. Of course, having a good backup before you started is a good plan. I didn't actually do that in this case because my approach, if I mess the system up, I just save the home directory, reinstall 20.3 over the old one and reinstall the home directory and that's fine. I find that faster than messing with backups and time shift and stuff like that. But for the average user, I'd probably say time shift is going to be a good thing for you to do. So anyway, hopefully this helped you out with upgrading and thinking about how you might approach upgrades to your systems in the future, particularly something that's not Arch and doesn't roll automatically. So anyway, with that, thanks for watching everybody and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.